What's up guys, Doc in Progress here, and today we'll be talking about the five things you need to ask yourself before picking a medical school. So, there's a medical school deadline coming up to make decisions on the one place you wanna end up. Now obviously this doesn't count for waitlisted spots or anything like that, but everyone holding multiple positions in medical school has to decide on one place to hold by April 30th. Uh, I believe that's the deadline this year, it was the deadline last year, and the year before that. So generally it's around the same time every year. And it can be a tough decision. Obviously there are a number of factors and I've tried to narrow it down to the five things that kind of got me to my end point. Um, by no means was this the only things I talked about, or uh, sorry, the only things I thought about, but uh, these are some important things to kind of think about when you're deciding on that. So let's get started. First thing you want to ask yourself is fit. Yes, uh, you know, this is one of those generic things you hear from students when you go see the school, from the administration, uh, all of that. Um, fit is super important, so that's why everyone talks about it. So, what does fit mean? Well, when you went there, did you feel like you fit in? Uh, it's kind of as simple as that, you know, you find your people, you find your niche. Uh, each school has a different type of person that goes there. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're going to be different types of cliques and stuff like that within the school itself, but there is definitely kind of a aura and atmosphere that gets set when you figure out what type of person goes to the school. And you can kind of tell that from the class beforehand and the class that meets you uh, when you go up there to go for your interview. So the first year class, the second year class, whoever you meet, did you get along with them? Did you get along with the, the interviewees there? Because obviously, you know, Unless you go to a super small school like Mayo, uh, there's a high likelihood that at least someone in your interview is also going to be your classmate somewhere. Uh, it might be that school and you both are there, right? So there's a likelihood that you could be classmates there. So did you get along with your interviewees? Yeah, so I mean, th that's it's a super important thing because if you go to a school with a bunch of gunners and you're not a gunner or you don't have that type of attitude, you will be miserable. Uh, if you go to a school and everyone's way, way too collaborative, well, medicine's kind of collaborative, so, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but it can definitely be annoying. Um, so you need to find that balance between where you feel you fit in with people and where you feel that you can be happy, and hopefully all those things align. So yeah, that's what I mean by fit. Find the place that you feel like your people are at and where you will be happy for four years or more. So let's move on to the second thing now, prestige. This is the one thing that schools probably won't say to you and students probably won't say to you. People will say, oh, prestige doesn't matter. And guess what? They're kind of right. What I mean by that is that, as you probably know by now, if you've gotten into medical school, and maybe you're watching this before you got into medical school, it does not matter what undergrad you go to. Now, if you spent $70,000 a year going to a private, whatever, top line school, I don't know. Should we use Duke? Sure, let's use Duke. If you went there and you're spending disgusting amounts of money to go to that school with no scholarship, you have the exact same chance of getting into medical school that someone went to a state school. State school. It doesn't matter where you go, it matters what you make of it. If you have a 2.0 at Harvard, you're not going to medical school. If you have a 4.0 at a state school, and you got a 520 on your MCAT, you're probably going to medical school as long as you're a normal human being and can you know, sit through the interview and can be kind of interesting. Um, undergrad doesn't matter, and it kind of, kind of is the same thing for where you go to medical school and getting into residency. There is some merit to being a big fish in a small pond in terms of, hey, maybe it's not the most prestigious school in the world, maybe it's like 80th on the ranking of US News, but you're the number one person at that school, it will not matter where you went. As long as you get a good step one score, as long as you're performing at a high capacity, and as long as you show them you have that capability, it doesn't matter. The same is true if you go to the number one school, the number one medical school, and you're like the bottom of the barrel and you don't try, you're not gonna match well. So, by prestige, what I mean by that in terms of picking your medical school is 
don't let it affect you that much, but do understand that, hey, if you're a hard worker and you have a really prestigious school that you got into and a not so prestigious school you got into, you probably will have an easier time matching at a higher tier program from that higher tier, higher prestige school. But don't think that that's the only way you can get there. It's all based on you as a person. Now, the reason I bring up prestige is because US News has become a bigger and bigger factor, whether we like it or not, in the universe of, hey, do medical schools take that score seriously? And do residency programs take that score seriously? And being a medical student, I've now got to talk to more and more residency directors. And the consensus is, yes, they understand it's kind of just a score made by non-physicians, so really it shouldn't hold any merit. But the fact of the matter is, it's going to because it is a scale we can use to kind of rank one program to the next. And so what residency directors have at least said openly is that first thing they do, at least for competitive programs, is they're going to look at step one score and maybe they're not even looking at it. It's probably a computer program and it just wipes out everyone below a threshold for competitive specialties. And honestly, they also said that, yes, at some, sometimes they have just a lot of applications and the factor they use is they're going to throw away, you know, X bottom of barrel schools and whether that's fair or not, uh, you know, I can't say, but uh, that's just the fact I'm giving you and the information I got that I'm giving you. Um, if you have a 280 at a low tier school, yeah, they're going to flag you as like, holy crap, this kid's amazing, like, and they're not going to throw your file out. But, you know, if you have a 245 from the number one school and a 245 step one score from the 70th school, the 70th school, the file's probably not going to be read. It's probably going to be thrown away. If you if that was the case and everyone got a 245, if the only differentiating factor there then is prestige of school, unfortunately, from my understanding, that the prestige of the school is used as another kind of way to lessen the pile. But guess what? Once you once you got human eyes on that pile, then that's when all the factors start kicking in. So don't worry too much about that. But that's my thought on prestige. Um, you know, take it how you will. I'm just giving you the information I have and my thoughts on that whole scenario. All right, third thing, money. This ties into prestige because guess what? If you got into the 15th best school in the country and it's gonna cost you $70,000 a year and they're giving you zero scholarship and you got into the 45th best, best medical school and they're giving you a full ride, go to the 45th best school. Money should be important to you unless your parents are millionaires and I'm great I'm so I'm really am happy for you that that is not a factor in life but the fact of the matter is for a lot of people including me money is you know something you got to think about and it's something that sometimes people don't think about because loans 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 but guess what that loan you took out for that book that was two hundred dollars you should actually look at as like a thousand five hundred dollar loan because that's how much interest is going to accrue at the end of time. So you really have to put a large emphasis on the money aspect of medical school. If you're lucky enough to get married scholarships, you know, there's obviously financial aid scholarship stuff too. But most people in the middle class who still, you know, they can't, you still can't afford medical school. It, it, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle class or, you know, below the poverty line below the poverty line you're probably going to get full financial aid not necessarily merit but if you're in the middle class and your parents make money your scholarship from financial aid is based on what your parents make that's not fair i'll say that I don't, that's just dumb but that they have to find a way because the you know and it's dumb because the assumption is oh like your parents are going to help you but that's not the whose parents pays for medical school no one's parents pay for medical school unless they're making millions of dollars so it doesn't matter if you're in the middle class, lower class. If you're below a poverty line, if you're if you're below a certain threshold, yeah, you're gonna get good fin financial aid. But if you're in the middle class and your parents make you know a sum of money, uh, you know you might not get any financial aid. Merit though is based on merit. Woo! Thank God that exists. So you performed at the top of your class forever. You know you you made it out with a 4.0, 3.9. 520 MCAT, really interesting person, and you get those merit scholarships. Now, 
Those things are just beautiful because they are definite money you have in the bank. Free money, no interest, it's all yours for your hard work. Now, this should be one of, like, as I said already, the biggest factors in where you decide to go to medical school because, you know, un unless, <laughs> literally unless it's your, you got into an unranked school with a full ride and Harvard, I mean, I would take Harvard at that point, to be honest, but, uh, you know, that's still up to you because guess what? Again, you will go anywhere you want to go if you work hard enough. I truly believe in that. Also, read this book. All you, all of you should read this book. White Coat Investor, okay? No, I'm not sponsored by it. But hey, White Coat Investor, Dr. Dahl, hit me up. But he makes, I, I'm going to quote a part of this book. And this is so true. And in hindsight, it is really true. And luckily for me, you know, I, I'll tell you my story about it later, but that's not important right now. But yeah, I, you know, I got lucky because I got that, you know, the high tier school and the money. And so those two things aligned. So it was an easy decision on that aspect. But also, I did get into other less prestigious schools that were still prestigious schools that gave me like a lot of money. And so it was hard to give up that, that money and still know I had to pay at least some out of pocket money for mail. But in the end, I decided that was best for me. And that was due to other factors, which we will talk about in a few minutes. But right now, here's the quote. You may want to spend a little more money in order to be in a desirable city or to go to a school where you think the education will be better. But don't spend a lot. Certainly don't spend twice as much. This is should be your creed. This should be what you live by. Please don't spend twice as much just to live in New York City. Do not spend twice as much to go to the 20th best medical school instead of the 40th best medical school. Go with the money. Okay? Money fit. You know, money fit prestige. Let's move on. All right. Fourth thing, location. Where is this school? Now this, in my opinion, should be one of the lowest priority things you ask yourself. Because yes, does location matter in life? Does your internal happiness matter? Absolutely. But guess what? I, I live, I'm from New Jersey. I was close to New York City my whole life. I'm close to, you know, civilization. And now I live in Rochester, Minnesota. And did I want to live in Minnesota? Did I want to live in Rochester, Minnesota? No. But the, the, the thing about location that I want to tell you is that it should not be an important variable. Yes, you should, you know, obviously there's more than medical school than, to medical school than just medical school. You have a life. It's important to find things that are out there. But the reality is that if you're, if you're not in the middle of, of Kansas, away, like 500 miles away from all civilization, uh, there's going to be things to do no matter where you go. And you should never allow location to shift you away from a phenomenal school. And Mayo's a great example, you know, Rochester, Minnesota, you know, would have been great to be in, you know, New York City for medical school. And I thought that in my brain too. And, you know, of course that was a, a factor in my mind, but I asked myself if the Mayo Clinic was based in New York City, would any of the other schools on my plate even be a thought in my mind? And the answer to that was no. So ask yourself the same question, you know, wherever you may be going, uh, you know, maybe you have the great privilege of, you know, being in one of the great cities at, you know, like a high tier school and you don't have to make the decision between, you know, middle of nowhere school and city school and maybe all your schools that you got into are in cities or west coast, east coast, you know, whatever. But if you are in that predicament where you have to decide don't let it be a huge variable uh, because it's four years of your life, four very fast years, I can tell you that much. It's, it goes by really quick. And then you, you can go wherever you want. I mean, realistically, you can go wherever you want. Your match list, it, it can be just East Coast, just West Coast. You know, you decide your own match list, so. All right, and now the fifth and final thing we'll be talking about is opportunity. Opportunity and the merit slash financial aid you get from the school, huge factors, huge factors. Now, opportunity means what can you accomplish at this school? Uh, you know, it, it might be a prestigious school, but does the faculty have a high output? 
Are you going to be able to do what you want to do? Are you going to be able to explore the fields you want to explore? You know, do you have the time to? Do you have the opportunity to do research and publish? Uh, whatever opportunity means to you, whatever you desire to do in medical school, are you going to be capable of doing it there? Because there are some high tier programs where you're just not going to have that opportunity to shadow this, you know, field of person, field or person or, you know, whatever. It, it, it's like if you are just set on rural medicine and, you, you know, does the program have something where, you know, you can go do that? Or if you're set on taking care of, you know, Native American populations, are you, will you have the capability to do that? Uh, if you want to be a surgeon, are, are you going to have the opportunity to collaborate with, you know, world-class surgeons? Are you going to have the opportunity to publish? Uh, you know, I'm kind of reiterating what I just said before, but uh, that's so important. And, you know, that definitely was a de one of the defining factors of why I chose Mayo as a school. Because, you know, I mean, all of these things I've talked about with you, those all came together as one thing. You know, I, I did, and opportunity-wise, I knew that this school would give me any opportunity I ever desired. You know, I, I I want to be a neurosurgeon. I wanted to be a neurosurgeon for a long time. And I knew that there's no better place to go to set the foundation to then become a neurosurgeon. Um, and I knew I would have the opportunity here to really learn from spectacular people, you know, and not just neurosurgeons. I mean, you know, internal medicine doctors, you know, who, whoever it may be, just these, all of these doctors, come together and collaborate so often at Mayo that you just get to, you know, you learn from so many angles. I, I mean, you can be in a neurosurgery or and there could be a ENT doctor and they're collaborating with a neurosurgeon and then you're learning about ENT. And these are the types of opportunities you have to think about. And, you know, for me also, Mayo has these selective weeks after each block, which are absolute pure gold. And you don't appreciate time really before medical school. But when you go to a school that gives you time, time for wellness, time to explore, you know, whatever school that might be, it doesn't just have to be Mayo selective time, but whatever school, you need to make sure you have time and opportunity so that you can utilize your time to kind of take advantage of those opportunities. And yeah, so those are the five things and they're summarized here or wherever I might have put them on the screen. Um, I hope you enjoyed and uh, you know, I hope to be releasing more videos soon and I you know I know you guys want to see surroundings and stuff of Mayo more and uh, you know, I'm gonna get on that and yeah Good luck guys